Hi and welcome all. High or low, butcher baker, tall or small. I am Grimnir and this is the Grimnir Gate. Another dreary and chilly week in the mountains, grinding down acolytes of the ever-burning eye, also known as the man. What is better to drive dread and weariness away than the hall of fire and the mug of ale in the company of a cheerful friend or two? Welcome to this week's Tavern Talk. While we let our two friends here take a well-deserved nap after their cold endeavors in the misty mountains, I'm going to use the opportunity to talk about something else than dwarves for the moment. I'm going to talk about our host and his house. Since we have been his guests for a while, it seems only fair that we tell his tale. The master of the house was an elf friend, one of those people whose fathers came into the strange stories before the beginning of history, the wars of the evil goblins and the elves and the first men in the north. In those days of our tale, there were still some people who had both elves and heroes of the north for ancestors, and Elrond, the master of the house, was their chief. He was as noble and as fair in face as an elf lord, as strong as a warrior, as wise as a wizard, as venerable as a king of dwarves, and as kind as a summer. This little passage is from The Hobbit, and the first meeting with the Lord of Rivendell, a descendant in straight downward line of elf, men, and Maya. This mighty elf lord was born in the elder days in the lands of Beleriand, as one of the twin sons of Erendil and Elving. Elrond and Elros was brought up and fostered by Maglor, son of Feanor, and the, after the War of Wrath that ended the First Age, they had travelled to Linden to stay with the High King of the Noldor, Gilgalad. As with this bloodline of both men and elf, a time came for the brothers to make a choice. Elrond took the path of elves, and his brother chose to walk among the mortal men. While Elros became the first king of Numenor, Elrond continued in the service of Gilgalad. When he later married Celebrian, the daughter of Galadriel and Celeborn, he also would father twin sons, Elrohir and Elada, and a daughter, Arvan and Domiel, with a beauty so great that the legacy of Luthien was clear for all to see and their home was Rivendell, the last homely house to the east of the great sea. Here it is at last, he called, and the others gathered round him and looked over the edge. They saw a valley far below. They could hear the voice of hurrying water in a rocky bed at the bottom. The scent of trees was in the air, and there was a light on the valley side across the water. Bilbo never forgot the way they slithered and slipped in the dusk down the steep zigzag path into the secret valley of Rivendell. So Rivendell is hidden in a deep valley in the foothills and moorlands west of the Misty Mountains, at the edge of a narrow gorge of the Brunan River. There is pine trees at the top of the valley, while the bottom is mostly oak and beech. Even though Imladris was a house of learning and peace, its story began with war, and it withstood two sieges from the forces of the Dark Lord Sauron. First, in the Second Age, when Sauron attacked Eregion, and Elrond came with a force from Linden to their aid, but had to retreat to the valley of Rivendell. Actually, he got help from the dwarves of Casadum, who attacked the enemy from behind. Elrond made a stronghold of the valley until Gilgalad and forces from Númenor broke the siege. In the Third Age, Rivendell was again besieged, this time by the forces of Angmar that conquered Rudaur and Cardola. Now the elves of Lothlórien came and together they drove the Witch King away. After that, the power of Imladris and its master was unbroken and it became a haven of healing and wisdom and as Elrond self said the preservation of things unstained. It was also a place to safe keep people and paraphernalia fight 
equal to the fate and future of Middle-earth. In the Second Age, Isildur's wife and the youngest heir, Valandil, were kept safe at Rivendell, a tradition that would continue through the ages and where Aragorn was the last in line. After the disaster at the Gladden Fields, Isildur's herald, Othar, brought the shards of Narsil to Elrond. Through time, more heirlooms of men came to be kept at Imladris, like the Ring of Barahir, the Scepter of Anuminas, and the remaining documents of the history of Numenor. But among all the things of power and importance in the last homely house, Lord Elrond is the bearer of the greatest one given to him by Gilgalad himself. On one of his finger rests one of the three rings for the elven kings under the sky, Vilja, which is Quenya for the ring of air, or the blue ring, a gold ring with a blue sapphire made by Celebrimbor before the influence of the Dark Lord, but its power and fate still bound to the One Ring. Mightiest of the Elven Rings, it has the power to heal and preserve wisdom, halt the passage of time and postpone the weariness of the world, and if it couldn't help him to save and heal beloved Celebrian that he lost to the Undying Lands, it most certainly helped him to save at least two hobbits from a darker fate and also to keep Imladris safe. So, even if there is much beauty and peace here in Rivendell, or as Bilbo describes it, a perfect house, whether you like food or sleep or storytelling or singing or just sitting and thinking best, or a pleasant mixture of them all, there is quite a bit more to Imladris and its master than first meets the eye. So, that's all for today won't be any jokes because I won't wake up my friends here now when I have used up the time talking about else. Thank you for watching. Have a nice time and welcome back.